Hello, everyone. Welcome back to Investor Intel. I'm Peter Clausey. Bit of a new one for you today. We're here with Chris Thompson, who is a, get ready for it, CFA, MBA, PNG, but more importantly for this conversation, the owner of eResearch. Hi, Chris. Good morning, Peter. How are you today? I'm well. So uh, I've known you a long time. Uh, you've done a lot in the business, a lot in the industry, but you're relatively new to e-research. That's about a year and a half for you, right? That's correct. Yeah, I bought it at the end of 2018, but really relaunched it last year in 2019. And e-research is an independent research house that provides research on public companies. That's correct. Yeah, we focus primarily on public companies. Uh, providing uh, equity research reports, industry reports, and company reports, covering a variety of sectors. Do you have a favorite sector, seeing how you're a PNG? I'm, I'm going for the <laughs> well, mining. Yeah, uh, background for me, uh, um, I come from a mining household. so uh, whoa, whoa, I do a stop, lot of, uh, stop there. Your dad's in the mining hall of fame. Let's yeah. not undersell it. Yeah, exactly. Okay. So I have a, I have a, a fairly good uh, knowledge of the business from uh, growing up with with him and, uh, you know, investing alongside him in the various companies that he, he worked at over the years. Um, and so I've been investing, uh, you know, in the mining space ever since I was 15. Uh, is so there, is there a get... property in North America your dad hasn't walked? I would say probably not. <laughs> uh, you know, at one point in time, when he retired from the, you know, his uh, president role, he then became a professional director. And so you know, at any one given time, he was a director of six to eight companies. And so, uh, you know, all the way from South America, you know, he was in, uh, you know, Africa in, in the in the 70s and 80s, well before a lot of the other people were. Yeah. So uh, I, I think most of the properties he's, he's either heard of or walked on uh, one time or another or kicked some rocks, at least. It's like I talked to Tom O'Grislo and I try to surprise him with something. It's just not possible. Yeah. And in this business, it's sometimes important to have that history because, you know, guys dust off all project, old projects all the time and they want to see what uh, what's under the covers. Um, the other specialty for me is in is in, uh, you know, technology. I have a background from, you know, from my work and my engineering. Uh, and then, you know, we cover our, uh, a variety of other spaces, including, you know, the, the general, uh, you know, the food industry, you know, technology, uh, health tech. Um, you know, in the Canadian market, you have to be very flexible when it comes to, to covering companies. So apart from who's going to pay you, how do you decide who you're going to cover? And I'm not, I'm not downplaying the payment part. We all get paid to do our things. You make disclosure, you're transparent, there's nothing wrong with it. But how do you pick who you want to cover? Really, we're looking at companies um, and industries where there are catalysts that are driving things forward. And so like right now you're looking at, you know, what is the valuation on companies that are either uh, that could have some sort of catalyst to drive it higher. Uh, you know, in this right now, we're looking at things like, you know, uh, the, the electric vehicle space, which, you know, is, is a very uh, a, a good industry right now growing in leaps and bounds, both from a technology side as well as a mining side. Uh, other, indus other industries like uh, the food industry is also one of the ones right now which is which is very active, uh, especially on the organic side and the plant-based side, where you have companies that are, are are following a demographic where there's right now there's a huge trend towards healthy eating, healthy living, you know, organic products, natural products, uh, plant-based products. And so these are the, the areas. So we try to focus on, you know, industries where we see the, the natural growth occurring and that companies that, that can then, you know, benefit from that growth in the actual overall industry and then find the ones that will have that catalyst, uh, you know, to grow further. And that brings us to November 11th, 2020, in a company I'd never heard of called Organic Garage Limited. You initiated coverage on it. Um, uh, it's growing because it's organic and it's having a COVID-19 sales bump. Well, it's it's actually it's been around for a long time too. So it's been around since 2005, but only listed in 2016. So, but so it's been around and and sort of um, you know growing slowly into this marketplace. But it, so it was sort of a, a leader in the organic food space, and and it's a really it's a it's a differentiated product where you'll find it because they they really want to be the low cost provider of organic and natural foods. How many stores do they have? 
Currently, right now, they have four active, and there's one that's being built uh, in Toronto uh, in Leaside which should come on board sometime uh, next year. And your report says uh, they, they plan to open a new store annually. For how long? Well, that, they, that that's their plan is they want to keep on growing uh, into their market. They believe uh, there's in Ontario, there's at least 20 other locations and markets they could be in. And so they want to grow, uh, you know, annually at the store count. And that's what they and continue to hit that marketplace. It seems like they're a direct competitor to Whole Foods. How's that going to go? Or and, uh, what's the other one called? Goodness me. Yeah, so they are competitive to Whole Foods. And so what they try to focus on, uh, they're a much smaller footprint with a much uh, with fewer SKUs or, or fewer products. So they can focus on providing that low cost organic solution. So they're not trying to be everything to everybody in the store. It's a situation where you will go in to do a very fast shop and you'll get your, your basics and you'll know that, that everything is either organic or it's natural, which is not necessarily true as some of their competitors. Um, and it, you'll be able to do a fast shop, and it's and it's and you'll know that the pricing is probably anywhere from ten to twenty percent lower priced than its competitors in the marketplace. And that's what they strive to. They strive. And, and you and you value them as a multiple of forward revenue and EBITDA. How how'd you set? How, how did you settle on that as a metric? Well, you look at the industry itself, and so the, the industry is 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 valued on their on, the, on their sales, their forward sales, and how fast they're growing. Uh, in this case, they're priced at about a half times a revenue multiple uh, to next year's revenue, where their competitors are priced, uh, you know, closer to one times revenue. So it's it's undervalued right now in that in that metric, but. You know, part of the reason why it was it was valued it that way was because their EBITDA was negative, and so they had they were burning cash. And so over the last couple of years, and, and part part of that problem was as they were growing, they had a couple of bumps in the road. One of them being uh, the, the new store in Leaside was supposed to open two years ago, and that took a lot of uh, you know more costs and more uh, you know management time time to have to deal with the, the delays, uh, and that impacted the overall performance. But right now, so but over those two years, they spent a lot of time reducing costs. Um, and they've also now closed their distribution center and are going to be shipping the product directly to the stores. And that should, in, in my mind, when I was doing the numbers, should save anywhere from, say, four hundred dollars to $600,000 in next year's uh, you know, expenses, which then you know, makes them being some marginally unprofitable to, to profitable. Uh, and with the launch of the new store, um, you know, fully open by the end of next year, year, you know, you should see a good revenue boost. And it's in the Leaside neighborhood of Toronto, which is a fairly affluent neighborhood and, and would be a, a prime location for, for people who are looking for healthier eating and, and organic type of food. So, have, have, Has he research published a report since Organic Garage came out? Uh, in the last two months, you mean? Like the last month? No. Okay. Uh, no, we, haven't re we haven't done an update report yet. There their next uh, quarter. No, 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 no. Sorry, Chris. Not on organic. I meant on anything. Oh no, uh, we have a couple update reports coming out soon, but uh, not nothing yet so far. Okay. Well, I always appreciate chatting with you. I miss seeing you in person. Uh, <laughs> Thanks. I'll, I'll hoist a virtual whiskey in your honor tonight. Oh, great. Okay. <laughs> Thanks for your time. Thanks, Peter. Take care. Chris Thompson from eResearch. Peter Clausey signing off from Investor Intel. Have a safe day.